Last season, the Orlando Magic made the playoffs for the first time since the bubble and won over 45 games for the first time since Dwight Howard. While I'm not sure if they're quite in the upper echelon of contenders quite yet, I think the future is insanely bright for this Orlando team. Led by 21-year-old Paolo Boncaro and 23-year-old Franz Wagner, this Magic team burst onto the scene this past season, and I don't see them slowing down anytime soon. With them adding a few valuable pieces to their already deep core, I think this Magic team has the makings of a really good team now and a true title contender contender later. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Magic's offseason, their roster as a whole, and why I believe there will be a real problem this upcoming season. The major addition of Orlando's offseason was signing sought-after free agent Contavious Caldwell Pope. While many expected Orlando to add a ball handler and creator, they decided to go in a different direction and I think this was a great get. KCB has been an integral piece of multiple championship teams and is a top-tier role player. He has been a double-figure scorer while shooting 41.5% from deep and being a phenomenal defender over the past two years in Denver, and I think he fits in great in Orlando, as he would pretty much anywhere. KCP signed a three-year, $66 million deal with the Magic, and while it isn't a star swing like some wanted, it is still a great use of the cap flexibility you have in the last year of Paolo and Franz being on rookie deals. He will fit seamlessly in the starting lineup and add to the elite defense throughout the roster, something like a ball handler like a D'Angelo Russell or a Trey Young wouldn't do. While I think this roster has enough defense to cover for one of those guys, I think this is a great move that will also allow the ball to be in the hands of your young stars more. The Magic added floor spacing while also creating an even more scary defensive lineup, and it's hard to ask for more than that. The other major addition of the offseason was drafting Tristan Da Silva out of Colorado with the 18th overall pick in the draft. While I'm not upset with the Jared McCain pick, as a Sixers fan, I really wanted Tristan at pick 16. While he might not have the ceiling of a 19-year-old prospect, at 23 years old, Da Silva can come in and be a contributor right away. The 6'8 wing is a sniper and versatile wing that will add to the immense size of this Orlando roster. He also had an absolutely insane showing in Summer League. While he did only play three games, Tristan Da Silva averaged 18, 5, and 3 on over 60% from the field and nearly 59% from deep while also shooting 100% from the free throw line. Again, this is only a three game sample size, but that can't be a negative. This was a draft to find a piece, not a cornerstone, and I think the Magic accomplished that with their 18th pick. While KCP and De Silva were the only real additions made in Orlando, they had a much busier offseason than that suggests. The Magic extended or re-signed five guys, headlined by Franz Wagner's five-year max extension. While this came as a shock to some casual fans, Franz's extension is well-deserved. He averaged 25-4 and four this past season on decent efficiency and has just turned 23. The 20 a night on fair efficiency was accomplished while shooting just 28% from three, and while this is cause for concern, there is also something else to be taken from it. Over his first two seasons, Franz shot just under 36% from deep. While again, a dip like this is concerning, with Franz still managing decent overall efficiency, just a Imagine how effective he'll be if he can get his three-point shooting back to where it was. Franz also had a great showing in the Olympics for Germany, and I expect him to carry that into the season and continue making strides. The shooting is definitely something to watch though, with him shooting just 20% from deep for Germany, but even if his shooting never recovers, he will still be a highly effective player. The next biggest extension the Magic gave out was a five-year, $84 million extension to Jonathan Isaac. While Isaac definitely has injury concerns as we know, this was a genius contract for many reasons. The first being that it is front-loaded. The Magic continue to take Take advantage of the flexibility of your two biggest pieces being on rookie deals here. Isaac will be paid 25 million this upcoming season and then either 15 or 14 and a half million for the remaining four seasons. Isaac's injury concern is real, but this contract means that should he get hurt, it won't hurt nearly as much down the line. But should he remain healthy, the Magic have retained one of the best defenders in the game today on a great contract. Combine this with his ability to space the floor as he shot 37 and a half percent from deep this past season and you have one of the league's premier role players. You get a discount because of injury history and I think this contract is is more than worth that risk for the Magic. Franz, KCP, and Isaac were the major financial commitments Orlando made this offseason, but they also gave out three more contracts that could have an impact. All concerns about the Magic's big man rotation were put to rest, with deals being made to bring back both Mo Wagner and Goga Bataze. Franz's brother Mo was brought back on a two-year $22 million deal, and Goga inked a three-year $25 million deal. I thought surely at least one of these guys would head elsewhere, likely Goga, but again, the flexibility of having Paolo and Franz making less than $20 million combined really opened doors. Starting with Mo, he had a hyper-efficient year last year at 67.6% true shooting while scoring in double figures. Combine this with his relationship and chemistry with his brother, and I didn't see him anywhere else but remaining in Orlando. Mo has proven he belongs in this league over the last three and a half seasons in Orlando, 
and earned himself a nice payday. Next up, we have Goga Bataze. Somewhat like Mo, prior to his arrival in Orlando, I wasn't all that sure Goga would have a lengthy career. But this past season, he really broke out as a backup rim protector, and I think he's earned himself a spot in this league for a while. I was fully expecting Goga to land elsewhere with the Magic having Mo and Wendell, but I think this is great for the Magic. He is on a very tradable three-year $25 million descending contract, and also basically ensures the Magic will have quality center play at all times, even should one of the three go down. I thought surely Goga would go elsewhere to be a solidified backup big, but due to Orlando's cap situation, he was able to stay with a deal that I think is great for him and the Magic. The final re-signing the Magic made was re-signing Gary Harris on a two-year $15 million deal, and this is yet another contract that I love. While he had a bit of a down year, Gary has proven to be a quality piece. He has shot over 40% from deep over his past two seasons, and I think this is a great value contract. You get someone with the potential to be a real rotational piece and a positive for just $7.5 million a year. He has missed a decent amount of games lately, but this is a very low-risk gamble that I think can pay out big time. The Magic had a very busy and great offseason, but there's still a whole lot more to be discussed. While we've already been over a number of big pieces, we still haven't addressed the biggest, former number one overall pick, Paolo Boncaro. Paolo not only showed great improvement with less than ideal spacing, but also showed great signs once his first playoffs rolled around. The 6'10 versatile forward made his first all-star appearance of many, while taking strides in many areas of his game. Paolo took his three-point shooting from just shy of 30% as a rookie, to just shy of 34% on higher volume in his sophomore campaign. He also took his assists from 3.7 to 5.4 with just a 0.3 increase in turnovers. His scoring and overall efficiency saw jumps as well, and these are all great signs. Combine this with jumping from 23-7-5 in the regular season to 27-9-4 on better efficiency in his first ever playoff series, and I think it becomes obvious that we have a potential superstar in our hands. While Paolo does have some level of efficiency concerns, we have to keep in mind it was only his second year, and regardless of where it is overall, we have seen stark improvement from year one to year two. He also had less than ideal spacing, and with the removal of the likes of Markel Fultz and the additions of the likes of KCP, I think we see yet another jump from Paolo in year three. Paolo has shown great improvement, all-star production, and a rise in the postseason all in his first two years at age 21. While he, like everyone, has things to work on to reach his full potential, we are seeing great signs so far and I don't see that stopping. Next up, we have Jalen Suggs, and while he may not be the star many thought he could be, he has turned into an absolutely elite role player. The tenacious defender has shown stark improvement every year of his career and has really found his role in this league. The great part about this is that the fifth overall pick that had been written off by some has become a truly impactful player, but the bad part is you're going to have to pay him, and soon. But with Paolo's extension not kicking in for years and a number of great contracts I've reviewed so far, this shouldn't be too hard. This offseason would have been when an extension would have been agreed upon, but nothing materialized. While he won't be getting a max or anything, it's hard to imagine him costing any cheaper than 15 to 20 million a year, especially if he continues improving, which he has year over year to this point. He will be a restricted free agent, meaning the Magic can match any offer that comes his way, but should he experience another jump, it could get costly. While his box score numbers have been somewhat similar through his three years, his efficiency is where we see substantial substantial improvement. He has taken his true shooting percentage from 45.5% as a rookie to 52.8% as a sophomore and now to just over 60% in year three. He has taken his three-point shooting from 21.4% on just over four attempts as a rookie to 32.7% on just shy of four attempts in year two and now to just shy of 40% on just over five attempts a game in year three. This stark improvement is a testament to Sugg's work ethic and I don't see this stopping either. Now we have Wendell Carter Jr. and while we aren't seeing the 15 and 10 we once saw, we are seeing a more efficient Wendell in a new role. Carter is a stretch big who has seen improvement in his three-point percentage every year of his career and will be effective as a floor spacer for the likes of Paolo and Franz. While he hasn't been necessarily inefficient at any point during his three full seasons in Orlando, his efficiency has progressively improved as his role is strong. That skill hasn't necessarily gone anywhere though and he can still get you 15 on any given night. Wendell is the best piece of a three-headed monster of bigs that rivals any big rotation depth-wise. Cole Anthony is another piece who maybe isn't quite what some thought he could become but a very solid NBA player. His role has consistently decreased since year two, but he still earned a three-year $39 million extension at the start of last season. While Cole didn't build on his most efficient season in 22-23, I believe he still has room to grow and will be an important ball handler for this Orlando team. Shy of 34% from deep as a small guard in the modern NBA isn't ideal, but should he get back into the 36-37% to 37 range, I think he can at least replicate his production in the season before last. The next biggest piece, and I'd say the last key piece on this Orlando Magic team, is 2020. 
23-6 overall pick Anthony Black. While he only played just shy of 17 minutes a night in his rookie year, the 6'7 point guard definitely showed some promise, including in areas that were thought to be his biggest concerns. This concern was his shooting, and while it isn't the most volume, about 39.5% on 1.4 attempts a night in his about 17 minutes is definitely better than most would have thought, and a great indicator. Where he is most valuable though is on the defensive end, being yet another great defender present on this roster. His switchability and versatility as a 6'7 point guard are great, and should he develop, the Magic could run some insanely big lineups. While there are a lot of minutes to go around, expect a bigger role from Black in year two. The last two somewhat notable pieces on this roster are Caleb Houston and Jet Howard. Houston showed some substantial improvement efficiency-wise, going from just shy of 51% true shooting to just over 58%, and could become a real rotational piece down the line. If his three-point development continues, he could provide real value as a floor spacer. As for Jet Howard, we don't really know, but based on what we do know, it isn't looking great. While he did only appear in 18 games and play just shy of 67 minutes total in his rookie year, in that limited time he was not great shooting 33-28-50 splits. You'd have to think he can't be as bad as those numbers suggest as a former number 11 overall pick, but again, we have yet to really see anything, and I'm not sure where he fits into the rotation now with KCP and De Silva being added. To wrap this up, I think this Orlando team will be a real problem in the East and continue improving. There are eight teams with real talent in the East, so it's hard to say exactly where they land, but I do think this Magic team will be just about as good during the regular season as anyone not named Boston. Again, I don't know if they're ready to truly compete just yet, but I do think that as soon as 2020 25, 26, they could be a real top threat in the Eastern Conference. Orlando Magic Basketball is officially back, and there's a great path to substantial improvement with the age of their core and still holding all of their draft picks. The pieces are there, now all they need is time, and that is definitely on their side. That's gonna wrap this one up. If y'all could like the video, sub the channel, comment down below. You know, I mean, what are your thoughts on this Magic team? What are your thoughts on the additions? Again, I know some people, you know, want it. You know, I mean, D'Angelo Russell would have been, you know, it would have been a good pickup as a ball handler, but I know some, you know, like a Trey Young would have been a highly, highly impactful move that may have leaped from them, you know, already. But I do like, you know, the patient approach, you know, again, a Trey Young or even a D'Lo would have taken the ball out of, you know, your young guy's hands a lot, you know. So, you know, I, I I like, you know, I like the moves again. Could they have made more, you know, now immediate centered moves with their assets and their cap space? Sure, but I still really like what they did and think they will be a 50 win team or at least a 50 win quality team next season. Once again, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel would help me out a ton. Comment down below, whatever. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.